morning and welcome back to the lecture series on performative gender and religions in South Asia. We are discussing gender and performances in Bhakti movement. So, today we are going to mainly focus on the Vaishnavite tradition, Vaishnavism and we will look at uh, figures such as uh, Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Right? So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a 15th century saint and uh, a very important figure of the Bhakti tradition of the Vaishnavite uh, trend. So, he has been considered as an avatar of both Radha and Krishna and uh, it is uh, believed that he worshipped Krishna mainly with uh, bhajan, kirtan and dance. So, uh, performance becomes uh, very important when we talk about uh, the, the trend that uh, began with a figure uh, like uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from Bengal. Uh, he began the cult, the, the school which is today known as Gaurya Vaishnavism, the Gaurya Vaishnav cult uh, and uh, performance is at the heart of this uh, school or this cult. Chaitanya uh, expressed his uh, devotion through performance of Kirtan with his uh, group of uh, devotees and uh, Kirtan, the word Kirtan uh, consists of or refers to the choral singing of hymns and uh, you know taking or roting the name of God uh, and it is often accompanied by dance movements uh, which uh, culminate uh, frequently in states of trance, right. So, it refers to certain uh, you know extreme bodily gestures, uh, a, a rapturous ecstatic state uh, that uh, the devotee reaches through uh, a constant taking of the name of God, right. So, here we can see a representation of the dance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a kind of rapturous uh, uh, dance uh, expression where uh, you know the bodily joy, a state of bliss is being uh, conveyed through uh, dance. Now, a version of the Chaitanya myth uh, believes that uh, Krishna himself intended to experience the servitude of Radha and that is how and that is why he took birth as uh, Chaitanya, uh, as an avatar. So, uh, that way Chaitanya is seen uh, as an avatar of Krishna, right. Uh, so, uh, through this birth, uh, he has taught uh, Madhurya Prem Bhakti in topmost uh, Bipralambha Bhav. So, Bipralambha just hearkening back uh, our previous lectures, Bipralambha referring to love in separation and uh, he has taught, you know, love in separation to the people of the Kali Yuga through the birth of Chaitanya. So, uh, like I was saying, Bipralambha Bhav uh, refers to the feeling of separation. Chaitanya, uh, during his last 12 years of existence at uh, Jagannath Puri, uh, taught the people of the world how uh, through a feeling of separation, one can develop uh, one's love for God and Chaitanya's God was Krishna. So, the language of uh, the, the Gaudiya Vaishnavite cult, the language uh, which uh, was uh, kind of uh, you know started by Chaitanya is suffused with Prithiras, amorous sentiment and it is informed by the Viraha Bhakti. Just now we were talking about Vipralambha or love in separation. So, a devotion arising out of state of separateness. And uh, Chaitanya writes, my mind is agitated, it cannot be still, streams flow from my eyes. Uh, this is uh, a line, you know, verses taken from a poem called In the Kadamba Groove. So, my mind is agitated, it cannot be still, streams flow from my eyes. According to the Bhakti tradition, a bhakta or devotee passes through five successive stages uh, which begins with the shantaras 
or the resigned contemplation of the deity uh, further leading to dasya bhav or the practice of service to the deity followed by sakya bhav or friendship which warms into vatsalya or filial affection and lastly it rises to madhurya or an all engrossing amorous love. So, for Chaitanya uh, the realization of erotica and ecstasy uh, are not through sexual consummation in a heteronormative sense however. We have to understand that although he is talking about amor, about Preeti uh, and uh, you know Vipralambha too, uh, that is uh, not uh, uh, reference or allusion to uh, a heterosexual or a heteronormative kind of uh, uh, sexual expression or sexual consummation. He describes his state of position by Krishna which uh, is also known as Radha Bhav as a blend of poison and nectar. So, it is a state which entails breaking down of socially ascribed codes of normalcy and sanity and therefore, it is in a way uh, transgressive in nature. Right? So, when he is possessed by Krishna, he attains Radha Bhav, he becomes a, a blend, a, a coming together of uh, Radha and Krishna within the same body. Right? So, uh, mystic poets uh, such as uh, Chaitanya and Namalvar bridge the gap between the mythical Krishna and their personal male self. The concept of body in mystic traditions uh, neither symbolizes lust or karma nor male pride or purushabhiman. Rather, the mystic uh, identifies with the sentiments of the female playmate or the gopi, right. So, here uh, the, the amor is not uh, uh, referring to any kind of lust like I uh, keep uh, saying again and again. Uh, it is uh, more of the radha bhav, right, uh, where uh, the blending of uh, the male and uh, female counterparts happen within the body, within the soul of the saint. In the Antilila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishnadas Kabiraj describes Chaitanya with the following words, his mouth spuming, body delighted, eyes welling up, he lies unconscious like a fruit, outwardly fatigued but delirious within. So, uh, this is uh, something that can be seen as similar to um, the concept of Sunya Samadhi. Sunya Samadhi uh, or a state that signifies the ebbing of all differences, difference between human and God, the fervent devotee and the non-committal uh, devoted or almighty the seeker who is trapped in worldly sorrows and the sort who defies all uh, boundaries and is therefore blissful. In the end, what we see is Chaitanya's body uh, understood as the feminized male Krishna, whereas his soul becomes Radha and as one they deliver a kind of divine ecstasy in a temporal setting. Right? So, all the opposite forces uh, kind of blending within the form of the, uh, within the form, the ephemeral form of the saint, the human and the god coexist, the devotee and the devoted coexist, the, the uh, male and uh, the female, uh, you know, aspects Radha and Krishna become uh, his soul and his body respectively. When we look at this tradition of uh, Kirtan, it also has its own social angle. It is responsible for producing an egalitarian society. Uh, it is uh, an attempt at, uh, uh, you know, overthrowing the hierarchies uh, defined by uh, the caste system, 
So, it, it is a, a step towards uh, realizing a casteless society. Chaitanya threw open the door of a religion regardless of caste and other barriers uh, in the Hindu society. Uh, and uh, Lalitavati writes, uh, I quote, his approach to religion was not merely theoretical but practical. He sought to unite society by introducing Nam Sankirtan, Nagar Sankirtan, Mahotsav, Rathiyatra, uh, thus bringing about social equality of a rare type. In these Sankirtan assemblies, the Sudra and untouchables came in physical contact with the Brahmins, uh, sharing the same carpet. In these social gatherings, which also served as a social coalescer, we witness a serious violation of caste rules." Unquote. So, uh, the Nam Sankirtans, the Nagar Sankirtans, these different uh, performances were the Kirtans through which uh, Chaitanya would mainly worship Lord Krishna along with uh, other devotees. Vaishnavism lacks sectarian organization and its classifications are usually vague. A number of Vaishnav uh, sects uh, accommodate the marginal subjects. Uh, for example, most of the public women working as uh, sex workers uh, are disciples of the Kardaha uh, Goswami lineage, the Kardaha Goswami lineage uh, in Calcutta. Uh, on the other hand, we also have the orthodox schools such as the Shantipur Advaita Goswamis uh, who, that do not allow the uh, lower castes and the so called immoral elements to become members of their school. And then fringe subjects are traditionally found uh, you know uh, being admitted among the Nityananda descendants. So, the fringe subjects uh, traditionally uh, uh, find admission among the among Nityananda's descendants. So, on the other hand, we see that uh, the Santipur uh, Advaita Goswamis are more orthodox and they do not allow the fringe elements, the lower castes and the so called immoral elements to uh, you know get membership within their school. Uh, the, the fringe subjects usually get uh, absorbed and find admission among uh, Nityananda's descendants. So, uh, Vaishnavism as such uh, has uh, no one trend or uh, you know uh, tenet depending on the school, particular school and the guru from which uh, the school descends, uh, its, its outlook, its worldview is formed. It can be uh, anything ranging from very orthodox to very liberal and very accommodative, right. Uh, having said that, we should also remember that uh, Krishna, uh, the, the figure of Krishna finds a lot of popularity among the unisex people uh, in the Indic context. So, unisex people, you know, locally known as the hijras, the transgender section of the society, according to uh, a myth, uh, Krishna is considered as the husband of the uh, the hijras, uh, the transgenders and the unisex. Uh, so, he is a very popular figure uh, among them and, and uh, the Vaishnavite tradition uh, uh, kind of accommodates uh, what today we call as the LGBTQIA section, uh, the non-heteronormative uh, section of the society identify their spirituality going with the uh, Vaishnavite tradition. They are absorbed by many of the uh, relatively liberal Vaishnavite schools, right. So, according to the Indic uh, mythical tradition, uh, the, the unisex people considered uh, Krishna as their husband, right. And so, uh, the, what we know today as the LGBTQIA section, the non-heteronormative section, uh, find uh, their spirituality uh, reverberating uh, uh, with and, and uh, finding some kind of space within the uh, Vaishnavite uh, tradition, some of the more uh, liberal uh, schools of the Vaishnavite tradition. So, the Chaitanya Vaishnavas uh, include the Sudra caste devotees and allow them to take the 
uh, bheek or beggar's attire. Mm. On the other hand, the sannyasis who are very similar to the Vaishnavite tradition uh, follow caste discrimination. The renunciatory ideals in sannyasi order also talk of women as uh, temptresses who are uh, at the root of the saint's fall, right. So, the sannyasi tradition apparently very much parallel to the Vaishnavite tradition is more orthodox. Uh, they, they have a more a gendered, a more casteist approach uh, and are not all accommodative, not all uh, inclusionary in nature. So, Chaitanya temples follow the lesser manuals derived from the authoritarian text Hari Bhakti uh, Vilasa. And uh, for many of uh, the Vaishnava uh, sects, uh, we see that the object of worship is Chaitanya uh, rather than uh, Krishna. So, they uh, have a figure of Gauranga in their, uh, 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 you know, in the, in the Garbhagriha inside the temple and uh, that is the uh, core object of worship uh, alongside Radha and Krishna, along with Radha and Krishna. So, uh, the, the devotees uh, coming down from Chaitanya tradition would mainly worship the icon of uh, Chaitanya or Gauranga uh, rather than uh, Radha and Krishna. Radha and Krishna would also be at the side, but the main icon of worship remains Chaitanya himself. In Mahaprabhu's house, the liturgy followed by the Pujaris is in Sanskrit. However, the Sankirtans are mainly in vernacular or Bengali. All the Gauranga himself was a caste defying leader and the kind of Kirtans that he propagated that he spearheaded were ways of uh, breaking the shackles of the time worn caste system. One sees that the seating arrangement for uh, food uh, within his uh, house within the precincts of his house separate the vairagis from the householder and then the untouchables are allowed only till the open courtyard but not inside the garbhagriha of the temple. So, uh, next uh, talking about Vaishnavism, we look at the uh, culture, the school of Madhva Matha in uh, Karnataka. Uh, which was made after Vedantic philosopher Madhvacharya from the Vyasa period. Uh, in the Madhva Matha, during the evening ritual, the scholars give a discourse on topics uh, such as Mahabharat uh, outside of the sanctum sanctorum. And after this discourse, women can uh, sing bhajans in praise of Lord Krishna. So, uh, this uh, participatory uh, role of women, uh, this inclusionary, uh, uh, you know, uh, process uh, reduce the sharp difference between the genders and also allows the members of non-Madhva caste to participate. So, these activities reduce the sharp difference between the genders and allow the members of non-Madhva caste to participate where discourses are being uh, usually uh, practiced or uh, delivered by the males. However, the women are also included uh, at the time of singing bhajans in praise of Lord Krishna. Now, gender blur is observed in the practice of uh, the Krishna's icon being decorated with the costumes of goddesses during the uh, Navratri, which is the nine days of worshipping Sakti or feminine deity. So, during Navratri, the Vaishnavites um, uh, actually imagine Lord Krishna himself as a, a, a female deity and dress him up uh, like a goddess. That is a practice referring to some kind of gender blur or, or a playing with uh, the concept of gender, right. Uh, the Matha's attempt at orienting according to the modern system of uh, schooling and education uh, is, is available through uh, bringing out uh, or is practiced through bringing out journals, magazines, souvenirs and books on philosophy in different uh, regional languages as well as in English. Uh, according to a senior Swamiji 
in uh, Adaman Matha, uh, I quote, the only way out is education. One has to break the cycle of corruption which the Kshatriyas and Brahmins, the rulers and politicians have brought about, unquote. So, next we are going to talk about the Sahajiya Vaishnavas, uh, one of the marginal Vaishnav sects that do not find, uh, you know, inclusion uh, within uh, the, for example, uh, a mainstream school such as the Gaudiya uh, Vaishnav sect. There is a common saying among the Sahajiyas, uh, a marginal Vaishnav cult in India, that what is not there in the body is not there in the universe. The Sahajya Vaishnavism epitomizes uh, a case of gender blur. The practitioners of Sahajya Vaishnavism observe retentive sexuality, which denotes both, both the partners uh, drive, both the male and the female partners drive for being a woman. Both are striving to become a woman regardless of their biological uh, orientation or biological sex. Such a non-ejaculatory method of sexual union is opposed to the heteronormative imagination and they are not driven by the utilitarian social aims of pregnancy and reproduction. Uh, in its condition of eternal and immutable joy, uh, the, the practice of retentive sexuality makes the body replicate an ecstatic uh, experience of Vrindavan. Uh, and the body becomes the Gupta Vrindavan, the secret Vrindavan itself, right, through the practice of retentive sexuality. So, uh, through body centric expressions, the Sahaja Vaishnavas unsettle the uh, normative social oppositions between the householder and the renouncer and even uh, rejects the social process of marriage as a warrant for sexual association. A Sahajiya practitioner is free to simultaneously enjoy the contradictory ideals of worldly detachment and sensual uh, desire. Additionally, when married couples adopt Sahajiya sannyas or hermitage, the woman has to take off uh, her markers of Hindu marriage such as the vermilion and, and other uh, you know objects uh, that uh, a married woman is supposed to wear and she also needs to shave off her head. This is highly transgressive when compared to the laws that shape the, normative, the heteronormative Hindu society. The Sahaja Vaishnav couple unifies through Yukta Bairagya, a Bairagya that is practiced both by the husband and the wife. Uh, it is also known as Yukta Bairagya is also known as Gopi Sanyas and it is, uh, it, it refers to an ego effaced feminine mood, there is no ego, there is no uh, one body dominating over the other in a, in a heterosexual sense, there is just an ego effaced a feminine mood. Uh, these unconventional bodily performances derive meanings of sexuality from the concept of uh, compassion. So, these uh, unconventional bodily performances derive meanings of sexuality from the concept of uh, compassion rather than hierarchy and domination. Uh, and they therefore push the boundaries and question the dichotomies and the rigid social orders that uh, form, that inform the institutionalized religions. Now, similar to the Sahajya Vaisnavas, the Bairagis uh, live in Akras that are close to the Vaishnav temples. These sects, the Sahajiyas, the Bairagis, they are all offshoots of the Vaishnavite tradition, but they are not, you know, uh, accommodated by uh, mainstream uh, Vaishnav uh, schools such as the ISKCON, the Gaudiya Vaishnavite sects and so on. They are Vaishnavas at the fringes. Uh, unlike the mainstream uh, Vaishnavism, the Vairagis are not ruled by strict uh, and uh, fixed diktats. Illiteracy prevents uh, them, uh, you know, access to texts and in the absence of definite uh, prescription or teaching, education is inducted among the Vairagis through inspirational agency such as songs of mendicancy expressing humble joy. So, for the hermits in the Indic traditions, 
the body is oftentimes seen as a holy text where the divine can be persuaded to live. Many Vaishnavas and Rambhaks cover their entire body or parts of the exposed body either with temporary clay and sandalwood paste imprints or with permanent tattoos. These markers uh, celebrate religion as a live and lived subject and uh, uphold the belief system of the masses. So, the Vaishnavas mark their torso, arms, neck and face with a uh, gopi chandan or uh, a kind of yellow clay uh, with the symbols of a uh, conch or shankha, disc or chakra, mace or gada and lotus or padma as well as symbols of Narayan or the Narayan mudra. Similarly, among the Veer Saivites, we see that uh, they often uh, tattoo or, or uh, paint their body with the symbol of the shivling. So, here we have uh, a bhajan whose author is Govinda Das uh, Kaviraj and this is how it goes. Bhajahu Reman Shri Nanda Randana Abhay Charanar Vindre Durnava Manava Janama Satsange Taraha E Bhava Sindhure. When translated to English, it goes as follows, O mind, just worship the lotus feet of the son of Nanda which make one fearless, having obtained his rare human birth, cross over this ocean of worldly existence through the association of saintly persons. Next, we are going to talk briefly about Tantra, the school of Tantrism. Uh, it is a school of mysticism in India uh, who, which, whose name, the name Tantra etymologically roots back to the word Tanu or body. So, Tantric or Tantrism or Tantra comes from Tanu. Tantric modes of worship entail body centric experiences and license the discharge of corporeal or animal instincts. With the help of a religion and semantics that are primarily uh, fleshy or, and rooted uh, to the body, the tantric mystics discipline and channelize the base bodily urges the urges that are uh, conventionally considered as base through sexo-yogic mechanisms and they follow the tantric teaching that one must rise by that by which one falls. So, body is uh, traditionally considered as the root of the fall of the man. So, one must rise by the body rather than consider it as a weakness. One must rise by that by which one falls. The mystic's uh, sexual impulses synthesizes bhoga or indulgence with yoga or liberation, pointing out that individual lives are inseparably unified with the schemes that uh, drive the larger universal system. Going back to what I said before, what is not there in the body is not there in the universe and vice versa. So, the starting point of the mystic uh, schools is the body. However, they supersede the metaphor of the body in order to reach a rapturous existence. So, the tantric practices require identifying and activating the different chakras or discs and the padmas or lotuses located at the different zones of the body, which enables the uh, practitioner to discover oneself and Alongside discovering oneself, one can discover the macrocosm better. By knowing the body, they know the universe better. Empathy is built in tantrism through mudras or gesticulations and touching various parts of the body which is known as nyasa, which has spiritual as well as therapeutic values. David Levin uh, states that the significance of mudras lies in I quote uh, Levin here, breaking down our ego structured encapsulations and opening us up to the being of other sentient natures. Mudra contributes to our self development by anchoring our life in the compassion of a transpersonal field, unquote. So, a body that realizes that it is in continuum with the universe. So, developing a kind of compassion which is only aroused through uh, a recognition 
of a, a transpersonal field or uh, a discovery of a transpersonal self, a self that is more than only itself, a self that is uh, a part, a strand uh, or, and, and in causality with the larger macrocosm, the universe. The ultimate aim of tantrism is to overcome uh, the limits of the anime and the pranime existences, the systems centering food and breathing and hence materialism and gross physicality. And even it aims at exceeding the bounds of the manume and the vigyanme, referring to the mind and consciousness, hence the ego. And by overcoming all these uh, aforesaid states, the, uh, the anname, the praname, the manume and the vigyanme, the tantric ultimately attains the state of anandame or pure rapture, pure bliss. The state of anandame invokes sunya samadhi or perfect equilibrium. Through sunya samadhi, uh, you know, there is a confluence of opposite forces. I will just go back to what I said uh, when discussing Chaitanya's experience of uh, a union of Radha and Krishna inside his body, a union of uh, the male and female force inside his body. He says that Krishna is my body and Radha is my soul. This is akin to Sunya Samadhi, right? This is the crux of the tantric idea of the body, right? And it is beyond the perceptual knowledge of uh, positive and negative traits, right? Sunya means a, an equilibrium, a balance where it is neither Bama nor Purush. Uh, it is actually celebrating the uh, state of equilibrium and uh, a state of uh, neuter, also known as Avadhuti. Right. The harmony that uh, describes Sunya Samadhi is metaphorically also seen as the unification of the feminine self uh, Radha or Shakti with the masculine self Krishna or Shiva. So, similarly, Buddhist Tantrism looks at uh, monasticism and sexuality as two complementary rather than contradictory qualities of the body and uh, when uh, a Tantric, uh, you know, meditates on a lifeless corpse, uh, he realizes the temporary nature of the material body or rupkaya, the material body's uh, ephemeral nature, transient nature and that is why it is called the rupkaya and yet such a corpse can also be seen as the bodhisattva's dharmakaya that is in the process of overcoming the conditions of embodiment, overcoming the schemes of causality. And therefore, such a corpse on which the tantric sits and meditates is damaged, but still beautiful. So, with this, I am going to stop my lecture here today and let us meet uh, with another round of discussions on the same topic in another lecture. Thank you.